My name is Helen Cullington and I'm an audiologist at University of Southampton and I'm talking about our virtual reality research project uh, for children with bilateral cochlear implants and the project is called Bears Both Ears. So um, as you know um, adults and children of all ages uh, with a severe to profound hearing loss can have a cochlear implant um, in the United Kingdom, adults have one implant and children have two implants. And this is a funding, a funding decision. So why do we have two ears? Well, of course, having two ears uh, allows you to localize. So it allows you to find where a sound is coming from. And it also improves your hearing in background noise. So having two ears is really useful. Children in the UK are routinely offered two cochlear implants, one in each ear, and this definitely helps their listening in background noise and their localization. But still, we find that um, their skills at these things are still far below children with normal hearing generally. And there's also not really any accepted protocols or rehabilitation for children to teach them how to use their two ears together. So um, over the past few years, we've been working with lots of children and young people with bilateral implants and they've told us situations that they find difficult. So they've said, can be difficult to combine the sound from the two ears. Um, the hearing can be a little bit lopsided or out of balance. Um, and it can be difficult in noisy situations. And of course, when you're a child or a young person, you are very often in noisy situations. Um, the children have also told us that doing rehab in the clinic um, can be not so engaging. And what they would prefer really is um, computer based approaches, which would would better fit into their lifestyles. So to allow them to manage their own care at home on the, in their own time. So we wanted to tell you a bit about the project that we're running. Um, we don't have the results of the project yet. It's still in the clinical trial. But what we are trying to do is evaluate whether using virtual reality games at home helps improve children and young people's everyday hearing. So our project has been really built on the principle of co-design. So we've had lots of involvement from children and young people with bilateral cochlear implants, um, We've had involvements from teachers, rehabilitationists, um, audiologists, all sorts of people um, to help us improve the project. So here's some of the groups that we've run to get feedback from people. And what we've tried to do is um, get feedback from people and then reincorporate it into the project. Um, so a participatory design. So um, often we have asked people with bilateral cochlear implants to present with us at conferences to talk about the project. So I'm just going to introduce you to Caitlin here. My name is Caitlin Hilson. I'm 19 years old. I work in a mainstream school with a deaf face, supporting deaf children alongside acting. I have bilateral cochlear implants. How I got involved with the first project was that I did a three month trial of the Bears virtual reality games. These games were so interactive and encouraged listening skills and following instructions. So just to show you the games we've developed. So um, there are three games um, working on different aspects of children's listening. And what we want to know is, will it help, ch help children's hearing if they use these games at home? So the three games um, that we have, uh, the first one is a diner. So where the child wears the virtual reality headset, 
they are um, working in a diner, they have to um, listen from all around the horizontal plane to people ordering things, to their manager asking them for things. So, and it, like all games, um, the better they do, the more challenging it becomes. So um, here's a little sample from that game. Hi, can I order something, please? I'd like something cold to go, please. Thanks. Hi, can I order something, please? Can you turn off the microwave for me? Thanks. Um, so as you can see, it's quite a fun, engaging game for children to play. Um, the next one is a target game. So um, the child uses the um, Oculus Quest um, hand controllers and they have to listen, find the targets as quick as they can um, in the horizontal plane. So they could be behind them, they could be anywhere. So this is a game, quite a simple game children enjoy. And then we also have um, a suite of music games. So there's all sorts of parts to this. Um, finding and identifying musical instruments, working on pitch, working on rhythm. Um, here's a little sample here. So we've developed the game so they can be played on an Oculus Quest headset or also they can be played on an iPad as well um, for smaller children or children who don't want to use the the headset. So for the trial, we are lending children either the Oculus Quest or the iPad and asking them to use it at home for three months and um, play on the games that we set, set up for them. So um, it's a randomized control trial. So we're aiming to recruit 384 children and we will randomize them to either take the virtual reality games home for three months or to continue with their usual care. So the aim is, as I say, to recruit 384 young people. And here is just a plan of the project. So we test everybody's uh, two ear skills at the baseline uh, when they um, are then randomized to either be in the bears group or the usual care group. And our main outcome measure is at the three month point. But we also want to test the children again at 12 months to see if any improvement sustains um, after the trial. This is our primary outcome measure. So it's um, a virtual test that we've developed for the project. So the child runs it on an iPad and basically they have to identify a word and then identify the direction of movement to the next word. Uh, this sounds complicated, but actually children can, can totally do it. Uh, we have a really big research team and um, you can see here I've highlighted the co-leads who are Debbie Vickers from University of Cambridge and Dan Jang from Guys and St Thomas's. Guys and St Thomas's are the sponsor of the project and Lorenzo Piccinelli from Imperial has led the development of the games. So at the moment we're recruiting for the trial and we've got just over 110 participants in 11 UK cochlear implant centres. So we're going to carry on recruiting for the rest of the year to hope to meet our recruitment target. Um, we've also just had some additional funding and this is to try and improve the diversity of the BEARS clinical trial. So 
we are going to be looking at how diverse the children are involved in bears and how we can improve this. Thank you very much for your attention.